go. Have you or someone you know had your life turned upside down because of your past? Of course I have. Everyone does background checks now, which makes it hard to bounce back. What do you believe? I believe your background shouldn't hold you back. It, sh- it should pay you back. This podcast will inspire you, motivate you, and inform you with everything you need to rise above your past and, and not be afraid to say, go, go ahead, check my background. My name is J. Dan Gum, and this is Background Check. You already know. Let's go. You can check my background. I'm a forgiving felon, so tell them that I won't back down now. You can bet I won't live in regret. It's time to earn some respect. You are tuning in to Background Check. Hey everyone, welcome to Background Check Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Van Gum, and uh, this is my co-host today. Jessa! Where we believe your background shouldn't hold you back, but it, it should, should pay, pay you back. back. That's right. Uh, as always, brought to you by Forgiven Felons, helping people with the past. Realize their future. Realize their future. So good to have you today on the Pandoverse. Welcome to everybody on the... Listen, in all nine videos, we've had over 200,000 views so far. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And almost 500 of you have hit that button for accepting Jesus Christ. And so uh, we just want to say from the bottom of our heart, thank you to all who have hit, hit that button and truly, maybe not by accident, but hit it because you made a commitment to serve Jesus Christ. We want to say welcome to the body of Christ, the family that makes you uh, our my brother and sister in Christ and her brother and sister in Christ because she gave her heart to the Lord a few years back and got baptized. So um, uh, it's going to be a good show today, huh? Yep. We go, We this is an old interview that we're showing, mm-hmm. but it's an interview of Ram, Rami, yeah. who is the producer of Tank Nation Radio oh, yeah. inside the Polunsky unit. And so we went, we did that a few months back and uh, it's, on, it's on the audio podcast. So if you're an audio follower, then you've already heard it. But we did video it, and we want to show the video so everybody on the Pandoverse can watch it. It's pretty cool to go inside. We've done, we've done one, two, three, four, five. We've done five inmate interviews, two in Idaho, okay, uh, one in Missouri, and then uh, one at the Kyle Unit with Chaz Roberts. What's up? One at the uh, Northeast Correctional Center in um, in Missouri. So what's up, Michael Etchison? And by the way. Um, some of those guys have actually sent stuff into us. Uh, Chaz at the Kyle Unit, we've inter- interviewed him twice uh, because we didn't get all the words in the first time. Can you imagine me not getting all the words in? Uh, he presented to me when I was there to speak to his class a in-game, game-worn net by the Spurs. This was Memphis versus the Spurs. Uh, this is the net that was used in the playoffs on the East Goal. Okay, let me see all that. Is that really an actual NBA, NBA basketball, basketball net? net from the Spurs? They installed it on April April sixteenth, two thousand sixteen, and took it off uh, April 29th, two thousand sixteen. It was on the East Goal. And it was in the wow. playoffs, round one. That's pretty cool. Thank you, Chaz from the Kyle Unit. We're praying for your parole, buddy. Uh, and speaking of Michael Etchison, uh, he commemorated our hundredth episode, which was a while back. Our 100th audio episode um, back, gosh, I don't know, over a year ago? Yeah. And uh, that's pretty cool. Thank you, Michael Etchison. Speaking of the Northeast Correctional Center, uh, I went up there to speak at one of their organizational banquets. Up there in Missouri, you can have inmates can form organizations. And I spoke at the Restorative Justice Organization, uh, led by inmates. They raised money. They donated money to forgiven felons. And they made this for me. Look at that. They know I'm a Steeler fan, so they made this little truck, Cedar Colors. Look at that, yeah. And they put our core values in the bed of the truck. Look at that. That's pretty cool, huh? Uh, so thank you. I can't remember that guy's name in the craft shop, but thank you so much. And then uh, Manny from the Cofield Unit uh, sent us man, sent us this, man. Manny from the Cofield Unit, Manuel. Thank you so much, bro. I think this is going to be a back tattoo. What do you think that looked good on the back, right? Yeah. Oh, man. What do you think, Mommy? You think Mommy let me do it? You don't think it's oh, true? Sure? No, I don't think so. Maybe. She said I could get sleeved out if, if I wanted to. All right, let's see. Uh, hey, real quick, I just want to share a couple Bible verses with you. I got frustrated this week um, at parole because uh, we just moved to our new location here in Texas, and they were dragging their feet with the, appro- uh, the approval process of this new location. Even though we've been serving 
uh, parolees and been in the proof house for 11 years, they they were dragging their feet. And we, we had three guys waiting. Uh, one, one of them's down there, Anthony, at the Sanchez unit. What's up, man? Uh, you're, all, you're all good to go. We're approved now. But we lost somebody that was already out here at the Dallas Transitional Center waiting to come. His PO said uh, they're on the pending and they're not they're not approved, so you got to go somewhere else. And she kind of rushed him and forced him to choose another transitional house um, just just days before we got approved. And so we're sad. That made me frustrated. But then it also made me think, what's the Bible say about frustration? First Peter five seven says, cast all your cares, even those, even my frustrations about parole, cast them all on Him, for He cares for me. Uh, another one says. Um, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Okay, so that guy ended up at the right place where he was supposed to be. God's turning it all. He got in, he got in a really good transitional house, so I'm glad for that. And uh, But then the next verse says, And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. So, if you're frustrated, cast all your cares on him. Don't be anxious for anything, all right? Just want to get that out of the way real quick. Uh, let's see, what else What else are we? Uh, digital mail. Digital mail. What's that? So a lot of you other states, Missouri and Florida and other, other states, do have digital mail programs. Texas is just now going to it. They've rolled out 10 units. One of them, I believe, is the Cofield and Polunsky. Uh, so you, a lot of you guys have been looking out for us as far as the halfway house. How does that affect us in sending applications into you and here's how it affects y'all all right so we will still send the application to you to um to your unit okay um well I, well i guess not no we will send it to the p.o box in dallas which is where securus is we'll send that they will scan it in send it to your tablet okay right now it's only 10 units so when we get application requests from these units we'll mail it to the p.o box They'll scan it, send it to your tablet, and then you have to put in an I-60 to the mailroom to request that that application be printed out and brought to you. And they they said they'll do it. I talked to the mailroom down in Huntsville, and they, they said that that's the process. Same with acceptance letters. When you do get accepted, we'll send you an acceptance letter through the P.O. box. They'll scan it, send it to your tablet, and then whenever you're ready, you send an I-60 to parole and ask them to print it out for you. All right, so that's... Why are the lights changing? Oh, oh, you notice that? So if you notice what she's talking about, this side over here stays the same, but this side over here will change colors. Oh, there it goes. goes to pink. Good eye, good eye. Um, I, you know, some of these lights, I, I don't know what I'm doing yet, and so I set it on something. I thought I was sitting on a, a specific color, and they change. So we're just going to let it go. All right, hope you like them. Hey, they like the fireworks, so maybe they like the changing lights. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hey, listen. So the interviews we got coming up, the first ones I think are going to be updates from the guys on the documentary. All right? They've all agreed to come back and do an update interview. It's been five years. Five years, 2018, since we filmed that documentary. And I want you to hear what they're doing now. And so let me ask you this. It's going to be a couple weeks before we start interviewing them. Do you have a question for one of the documentary participants, whether it's me uh, I think Jess is on there too with her crazy hair. Like, what? Do you, how do you do your hair like that? Um, or one of the main guys with their stories. Would do you have a question for them? If you do, let me know. And then when I interview them, I will ask them that question and, and say, "This question is from so and so, an inmate on blah blah blah." So, all right. Uh, let me see. I think that's all we got. Listen, Rami, Polanski unit. We love this dude, man. He's mega mind. They call him mega mind. That's his. Cause uh, you know he's got a big old, big old, big old dome top like I do, uh, but he admitted mine was as big as bigger, bigger than his. So uh, anyway, we love Mega Mind. Uh, he's incredible. He's doing great things there. God's just working in his life so much. But if you've already, if you're already an audio podcast listener, you followed us already. You've heard it. But if you haven't, then uh, this is this interview is is that with Rami from inside the Polunsky unit. They have a studio right there inside the corner of the gym uh it's incredible and we want to thank warden dickerson at the time he's been promoted and uh all the staff there for letting allowed us to do it chaplain martin thank you so much for setting that up um and the same day we did that we interviewed matt Ayers. uh we didn't video his but it's on audio so we've, we've interviewed two people from polunsky 
We've interviewed Chaz at the Cow Unit twice, and then Michael up in Missouri, and I forget the other two guys in Idaho. But um, but hey, listen, if your unit, wherever you are, all over the nation, if your unit uh, and your chaplain and your warden and your media department will allow us to come interview you, let us know. We don't mind doing it. And listen, we want to come do a service. Talk to your chaplain. Show him the video. Show him these. Show him what we do. <clears throat> and um, and about the podcast, Forgiven Felons. And we'll come do a service at your unit. Okay? If you're here locally, we might be able to bring our church, Social Dallas. Um, and so, by the way, you guys that write in that tell us about Social Dallas and Robert Madu, I do send him those messages. And uh, and, and they, they, they thank you. They thank you. All right. I think they have a, I don't even know what address you can mail to them to write. I think they have a PO box, but I'm not sure. So, uh, but just, you can just write me if you want to write social Dallas, write me and I'll always pass the message. All right. All right. We, we love y'all. Rami, uh, I don't know how to say his last name, so I'm just going to say Megamind. Uh, here's the interview. We hope you enjoy it and, uh, and have a great day and have a great week. And don't let your background hold you back. Make, make it pay you back. So here we are today. We are here with, man, this is this is like the final product we're all striving for, to be a podcaster out there one day, doing it like this young man. He's got a name. What's it? Jay, Jay Van. Dan, Jay Dan Gum. Jay Dan Gum. That sounds like a, like a super athlete, like somebody would be sitting <laughs> in the bleachers saying, uh, Don't go it, you got to run over by Dan Gum over there. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. Yeah. Uh well, we're we're in your territory, okay. Yeah, but you're I'm on your mercy. But you're on background check yep. podcast, so Amen. welcome, okay, to background check podcast. Thank you. And is Thank it you. is it Rami? Rami. Rami. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mega mind to the. That's, listen, I saw that mega, mega mind. I was like, mind. man, your I, head's bigger than mine. It is. It is. <laughs> so, uh, man, I, I'm blown away. Yeah. You know, I haven't seen anything like this in Texas. Yeah. I've only seen it in the at the Idaho prison, uh -huh. and their technology department. Yeah, and recording department, all that stuff is incredible. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I mean they've they've yeah. got some favor up there too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you, you, it's almost like there's there's a few bars I can see on the window into the gym, but yeah. outside of that, I feel like I'm in a I yeah. feel like I'm in a recording studio. Yeah, so that's good, um, man. Y'all have got some favor here at the we're here at the Polanski unit, guys. And I'm telling you what, it's um, it's amazing. My first time here, mm -hmm. and I think this is where Texas houses death row. Yeah. Uh, but there's we there's, call a, it life there's a lot here. of life here. Yeah, there's a lot. They renamed it life. Room. I love it, yeah. man. I love it. We got a letter from a Florida inmate uh, okay. that listens to the show, yeah. and she's she calls it she's on death row. Uh -huh. But they they used to call it life row, but they call it freedom row now. Wow. And so I love yeah. I love because we can take when you're in Christ, we can take mm -hmm. anything that is meant to sound or come across yeah. negative and have a negative connotation, and we can take yeah. it and sanctify it yeah we change that identity absolutely yeah. yes. absolutely well man i am so glad to be here and i'm glad to have you okay i'm honored to have you on the show yeah and uh and and i'm just Thank glad to be here me. so we're gonna yeah. we're gonna i've already i know a little of your story mm -hmm. and i know polunsky already knows your story yeah but now uh inmates across the nation in jails and prisons yeah I think I think they have over five hundred thousand tablets out there. Yeah, a whole bunch are gonna hear yeah. your story, and I'm I'm happy to put it on this platform and okay. share it. So, uh, so man, start off. Okay, uh -huh. our whole motto is your background shouldn't hold you back; it should pay you back. Yeah. So we're gonna hear your Remember story. That. Yeah. We're gonna hear your story, and and uh, we're gonna hear you know. Mm -hmm. some, Tell us what you do now first. I always yeah. like to. I'm not gonna treat you any different. Yeah. I like to start with who you are now. Yeah. The radio, DJ, all yeah. that stuff here at the Plunsky unit, who you are now. Then we'll get back into the okay. background check and, and all that. Well, I'm obviously Megamind here, the, the resident DJ here. This, this is where it all started. This was ground zero for the radio station. So I, I'm almost certain, I could be wrong, but we're one of the only inmate ran from top to bottom. Most radio stations have an organization or something linked right. to it. We are the one that this agency actually adopted the concept of peer to peer, and they let us build the radio station, uh, solicit the parts. Every single item in here is wow. donated by churches or individuals. You know, the agency played no part. Then that was by by. They did that mechanically. You yeah, know? they they didn't want their interaction anywhere in there. So uh, 
we built the radio station. There is obviously not instruction manuals for this stuff. So this <laughs> this built a prayer life for me right here. Yeah. Because we would have people like Gateway Church, uh, you know, donate boards and computer equipment, all kind of things. I love Gateway. And and they they give it to you, and they give you the little card that says log on to this site for further instructions. You know, and there is no logging on as an inmate. <laughs> you know, not without potential jail time. Nope. So. Uh, we 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 built a station and at first it was just going to be an infomercial type thing for safe prisons you know we this station was much like your situation uh, or how you began to grow it came out before the pandemic one week before the pandemic wow. it was like god put enough desperation and enough need by the agency and different people to want to get a word out there people were quarantined nobody was moving and how do you do? so uh well, god had put it in my heart about 10 years ago through a, a retiring director hey start a radio station so the first thing most people think is dude five thousand foot antenna who's yeah, going to approve that exactly over here, you know? and he was like no nah, it's a little 20 inch antenna it's low power it's a, it's all fcc regulated it's cool man you'll like it and it just kind of waned off but in right before the pandemic about a a week before that, uh, the need came up. God just brought it in everybody's heart. Uh, I had a volunteer, Tommy Dill, who passed away recently or a few years ago. And uh, uh, we talked to him. He went to the warden and the uh, chaplain guy, one of the chaplains here, he went to the warden and asked him. And he was like, oh, a radio station. Well, uh, absolutely not, you know. And uh, uh, he, he, didn't, he said, I don't know what changed me, the warden. He said, I don't know what changed me. But as soon as the chaplain began to walk out, he said, well, tell me a little more about it. what's your idea. So chap said, he said, well, I'll let you hang yourself with this one chap or it's going to be a great idea because it sounds good. And so we got the parts together. We experimented. We had uh, cables laying out everywhere, antennas laying out, trying to figure out how the how the. Now, know, has it always been here in this? It's in always this been room? in this okay, room. So yeah. this is the original room. This All original right. room. I've been here for 22 years, right here in this room, in one way or another, wow. either for church services, and now it's for a radio station. Wow. This has always been some type of a media room, but uh, uh, God just really opened the door. And today, I mean, we uh, we do podcasts back and forth. We're on the Securus tablets. We do. We're the. I, as far as I know, we're some of the only inmates that get to do video podcasts. Wow. And we do interviews. We have everybody from uh, Mr. Damian West to... Uh, yeah, yeah, he's been on ours. Yeah, everybody comes around, and uh, we have a lot of ex-residents that get out, and they're sending interviews in, and they're interviewing other people out there. So it's kind of like removing that anxiety, that angst, you know, guys Man. getting out, what's it going to be like? But the biggest thing probably is with Life Row here is being able to go back there uh, warden dickerson is a very progressive warden and he yes. actually approved some digital recorders so guys got to uh record their baptisms while they were getting baptized they wow. made you know before that you were making your public profession and it was like to the guard and to the you know whatever that was right. back there now it's a field minister back there with you he's got a recorder a camera and uh they're you're making your profession and during our live church services we interject oh, that baptism man. so for the guy that's sitting there's like he is it the walls just go away you know yeah uh, guys get to send uh, uh their mothers can send the bgs in they can send uh, uh audio tracks music birthday wishes uh, uh it's just a real it's a it's an isolation buster man yeah. it is man yeah for that's a guy so to good. hear his name on there and oh and i a, believe not only isolation but depression oh yeah, yeah anxiety i mean all it busts all these things yes, when yes. you can when you can uh deposit mm -hmm. encouragement music yeah. whatever yeah interviews into people yeah. that can't leave these walls yeah you know, and uh, I mean, and I think I people try that. to people try to rationalize that and say, well, I could kind of imagine what it's like. I'm like, Mom, go into your restroom right now, into your bathroom. Right. And don't come out. Yep. For 23 hours a day. Exactly. You know? Wash your hands in the toilet. Do all that kind of stuff. Then you'll know. And then that becomes a different reality. But uh, a guy being able to record a testimony or a message or actually teach a Voyager class, which they teach in here in the state. Uh, to do things like that and to actually hear his voice yeah. you know these guys on death row or life row they can't uh they can't turn the clock back and unforgive their crimes right. you know, or undo their crimes right. they can't find magical uh forgiveness all the times from the victims but every one of them say without without no holes barred every one of them has said uh, the only thing i can do is pay something for it before yeah. i leave this earth and uh to, for them to know that even when they're gone you know god forbid that the, the execution day goes through uh they know that their messages are going. Their encouragements yeah. are still being played and people's lives are still being changed. It's an awesome thing when a guy realizes. And they may not be building up anything else here on the earth. No. But but, but the, they're storing up treasures in heaven. They're taking the only thing that they can take with them to heaven, which is another person. 
by their encouragements, by their testimonies. They realize that they can't take a school or some books or a podcast. They can't take any of that, but they can take those people that listen to their conversations. That's the cool thing. That's why I take my hands off to you for podcasts and things like that in the world because I think people somehow along the way of technology and social media lost the reality of what a conversation can do to somebody else's life. Yep. You know, yep. I'll talk to you and you'll be like, you know him too. I know him too. or I know her too. And this world becomes really small and God becomes really big. He becomes Amen. an amazing architect in that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, listen, it hadn't always been this good. You ain't always had a, you know, some no. microphones and TVs and, and no. expensive equipment around you and, and being able to share God's word no. with, with the whole population. Um, you know, at some point in your life, mm-hmm. um, you know, life was different. Yeah. And so talk to us. Let's do a background check okay. on Rami now. Yeah. What was life growing up like in, in your house? You know, brothers, sisters, you know, did you, uh, were your parents divorced? Well, yeah. Did you go to private school? Were you a knucklehead? Yeah. Were you a straight A student? You know, mega I, mind. I got yeah. to mind. I got to believe you had yeah. some good academics, right? Yeah, I was, I was uh, you know, not in a bragging way. I was just blessed to be smart and didn't have to work very hard at achieving things. But I can, I can say that uh, I'm probably that person that you're like, there's no way you should have ended up there, you yeah. know? I mean, I didn't come from a religious. I'm, I'm from West Africa, from Ghana, Africa. Okay. You know? And everybody swears I'm black anyway when they hear me on the microphone. And they're like, it's got to be a six-foot black guy, you know? And it's just little old me. But uh, uh, I was born in West Africa, in Ghana. And my dad works for the government over there. We came here. I was going to school here. My mom and dad got a divorce. And so I grew up with just a mother, you know, so I have all the wounds from being raised by a mother. I love my mom, you know, but there's wounds from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it, you know, I lost some things growing up. Uh, uh, was doing good in school, went to college, uh, uh, had a great job, great friends, great girlfriends, got engaged. Had Just there was no reason for me to be on this microphone right, today, you yeah. know. And just uh, a few wrong decisions, you know, a few wrong decisions, a few wrong acquaintances and uh, not understanding the the system and uh, uh, just being very shit. I'm, I'm the one that was too sheltered and naive, mm. you know, and that's how I fell through the cracks. I wasn't the career criminal that they finally got me. You know, it's my first time. Never even had a speeding ticket, wow. you know, and uh, uh, I ended up in prison and I didn't take it seriously when I first came down. I thought it was very uh, I was like Donald Trump. I was like, 38 counts, so what? You know, and uh, uh, I didn't think it was real. And, yeah. the, and the prosecutor was like, uh, this is a real thing. Don't lose your life for this. You know, do what yeah. we're telling you to do and testify or do whatever. And I was just very naive, and I just fell through the cracks. I uh, came to McConnell unit in the early 90s, and I've been here 30 years already. I came to the McConnell unit, and when I got there, it was basically blood on the walls. I mean, literally like a handprint on the wall, bloody sliding down. I was like, I just came from county jail. And, uh, oh, you know, uh, uh, but when I look back, man, God's just even in my naivety and everything. God has just always been. I wasn't a Christian. I, did, I couldn't even have told you what the nativity meant, you know. Right. And uh, my mom, because my dad, my real father is a Muslim. So my mom, not being religious at all, felt the, uh, the sexism in that from her perspective as a woman. And uh, 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 she really kept me isolated from any form of religion all my life. Mm. And uh, so I grew up not knowing anything, you know, just being a decent person, not causing problems, not having trouble at all. And, uh, uh, you know, just doing life and doing it well. And then just one day it's just uh, I'm not one of those believers that believes God brings you to prison. I believe we do some screwed up things. Yeah. You know, when people say that, I understand what they mean, you know, uh, because. Because we do, we make our yeah. own decisions. God, God allows us, yeah. and that's the whole thing about yeah. free will. Yeah. God didn't put us in prison; He allowed us to come to prison. Yeah, He meets and, me here. Yeah, and he so you know, and, and even then, yeah. eight twenty-eight Romans eight yeah. twenty-eight, He can work all that yeah. for good as well. He takes that mess, and like they say here, it sounded cliches when I first heard it, but He takes that mess and makes a message out of it. You know, that's, that's the goodness of God. But uh, and you know, when you break that word down, mess, mm-hmm. and then age, yeah. When the mess ages, (laughs) it becomes a message. Like fine wine. Yes, yes. That's it. But uh, uh, he was with. He's been with me, man. I've been, you know, through county. I was. I've never been in a fight in my life. You know. Are you serious? And I came to McConnell Unit where every person came in. The first thing they ask you was what you know. What are you? What race? As soon as you get your housing area, they're going to check your heart and all that. And uh, you know, I was just. I was. uh, I was led to the Lord in county jail by a a ministry called Streets of Houston. That literally, they play on banjos and stuff. There's no reason. They should have led me to the Lord. I was way too smart for them. And uh, uh, they they led me to the Lord. And uh, 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 Pastor Dan Meter, he was like, you know, you can either become a sissy in the Lord or become the man that God has intended you to be. Oh, come on. And I was like, well, I I accept that challenge. Yeah. Even in, in county jail, 
uh, I went was in the worst gladiator tanks there were, and every tank I would go to in, would, in Harris County. In Harris County, they had a, they had one that's called the gladiator tank. Oh yeah, they had many of them they in Harris did. County. Yes. I, I feel like there was one main one that yeah. Reggie Hicks and, yes. and one of our guys went yeah. to. Uh, they, they always called it the gladiator tank. Oh, so. they had they had a gladiator floor in Harris wow. County. The whole okay. floor, all right, is the tenth floor, and you know I was there. I've done my time there, but uh, I was one of those people that like got to the gladiator tank and uh, as a saved person. And even when I didn't even know Jesus, man, he was right there with me. Right. right. And uh, I would walk in and have a Bible, you know, and put it down on my property. And the, the guys would be like, hey, we just got through arguing about the scripture. I'm a born again believer. I don't even know one scripture. You know, I've got a brand new NIV Bible under my arm and I uh, haven't even opened it. That's still stuck together, you know, <laughs> and they would be like, uh, hey, man, what's the scripture mean right here? And they would forget to check me, beat me up and see where my heart's at. And I, so if I have a, sp a spectacular fighting game, I don't even know. I've never got wow. to test it. You know? Wow. But uh, uh, even when I got to McConnell, uh, you know, I just walked onto the unit and uh, I, they forgot me, you know, as God does it. They forgot me at McConnell's just like this unit what they call a 2254 and everybody knows that when you come in on a chain you're on b-side in a holdover in, in a multi-purpose room they forgot me there so they came and said hey man you messed up count you're supposed to be on the building well apparently to make a long story short everybody was waiting on the building to beat me up the white guys because they were going to be the ones checking me so they wow. had asked the spanish guys and the blacks you know can we uh check him when he comes in so put your dope up in case he dies during this checking you know y'all don't get shook down and lose it's just a, the penitentiary respect thing yep. so because i was too late there were some good movies coming on and they didn't want to miss the movie so they forgot about the checking <laughs> so when i came in about nine o'clock at night they said that's your cell right there i walked in uh dropped my stuff i told my cell my cell he said hey don't even need to unpack your stuff you might not be here it might be a medical i was like i have no idea what you're talking about probably from this chain is what i'm going to medical for <laughs> so i got in the shower and uh, I took, I went to the first table where two Hispanic guys there uh, playing chess. I took my brand new Nike Air Maxes off, left them right there in the day room, walked into the shower. I'd been on chain for like four days, you know. I took my shower and I came back out. And these are diehard Hispanics. And I'm drying off with, you know, here they call it one slice of cheese. Yep. I'm in there with one slice, <laughs> one boxer on. I'm wet out of the shower. And they're playing chess, and I'm like, they're they're totally disrespected by this, you know. Wow. And they're like, if they the white guys don't kill him, we're gonna kill him, you know. And uh, I get to talk to both the guys later on. One of them actually comes to the Lord because wow. of seeing what God was doing. And but when I was in the shower, the guys had said, uh, uh, no, no one would leave their shoes out here. That's got to be a police officer. Don't do anything to him. So they thought I was a cop, and uh, they they didn't check me. Well, when I got back to the table, I beat the guy on the chess uh, board so bad that he 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 was actually the shot caller for the mexican mafia oh wow and he put out an order to the whites blacks and everybody that nobody could touch me until he beat me until he beat me on the chessboard and he said after a year of you teaching me chess and playing chess i forgot about the order but because it was an order it stood and i never got beat up checked oh, wow. and he he gave his life to the lord and came back to this prison and visited me in visitation the warden actually brought him down to the visitation and he said uh i just wanted you to meet my family seeing god protect wow. you when you didn't realize you were even being protected that's the god i wanted he said i wanted the god that i didn't have the beautiful words i didn't know the latin or the hebrew or anything i just saw you and every time they were going to beat you up steal your stuff do something fog would roll in the glass would be fogged over they couldn't get the officer's attention to get your door rolled to steal your stuff he said i was watching this with my own eyes and that's the god i wanted for my life and that's what my, that's the god my children serve my wife serves and i just want to say thank you today wow and that, that right there taught me man say it's not always by beautiful giant productions that we put together or hard work sometimes it's just walking and letting god do some things and people will see it and people will be amazed at what 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 God does in your life and and sometimes we don't even know the no. favor and protection that's that we walk in yeah. until others bring yeah. it to our attention like that that's shameful and uh and it's crazy God is God is I love I love one word that somebody described God as as, as a as a the great orchestrator yeah he's you an know, architect he yeah. knows how to to just be, build a beautiful symphony yeah. Whether it's in prison with an inmate, whether it's out there with yeah. people getting healed, what, what, no matter what it is, yeah. and uh, and and I love I love how he's orchestrated, yeah. you know your your whole story. Yeah. Um, so tell me, man, was your mom? What was what's your mom? How did she take you going to prison? Well, I mean, she was she was devastated into a lot of ways. She's one of the type of believers today that believe. Well, I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I just don't believe in religious, you know, or organized religion. So right. I'm kind of like, Mom, we got to work on that. But uh, uh, she was 
devastated because I was the one that was picked to succeed. I was the one that was, you know, top of my class. Uh, uh, father has a good position. I'm going to work for a government. You know, I'm going to have I had a, the road was paid for me. So when I came to prison, it took her a lot of years for it to sink in. Yeah. that this actually happened because during trial she you know everything looked really well it looked like it was good you know what i mean they had a they had a perpetrator of the case a trigger man they had another person and uh, uh who was actually the victim of it too you know of the of the case and uh it ended up uh, as everybody knows law parties and all that kind of stuff the trigger man got 20 years for testifying against two other people and we got i got a capital conspiracy charge and my co-defendant she got a, a capital charge as well you know just for no and the guy uh, that actually committed the crime got 20 year sentence made a deal with the state and uh went to a unit and, and hung and killed himself you know and I wow was like, wow i was like god this has got to be something that your fingers has to be in and you know that hurt my mom that hurt my mom because she had really embraced uh all of my friends and me and, and was it there as a mother and uh, it was really difficult for her to see or to understand why God would allow these things. And I was just talking to her last night about you coming in and we were sharing, we were looking, she was looking at some of your bio. I was trying to get a little look at you, you know, where you came from and everything. And she was like, uh, you know, beyond uh, who Jay is and all that, you would have never met some of these people before. And I'm starting, there's starting to be cracks in my motherly defenses where mm. I'm like, you know, I don't believe God brought you there, like you say, but, uh, I do believe God is doing something spectacular right now. And she has just blossomed now. Wow. You know? Just seeing God work through something like this. You know what I mean? I try to encourage guys. You don't have to build a radio station. You don't have to have a background check podcast. You don't have to have your pictures, your photographs. Uh, but there is a place for you, man. If it's Amen. just a conversation. Amen. Some of the greatest work that I've seen done by this radio station has been by Man on Life Row. Uh, John Henry Ramirez, before he was executed, he had a service back there. Warden Dickerson actually allowed them to come back there and do a praise and worship service. Mm. And his uh, his testimony of his relationship with his mother wanted to leave something that still today people are sending letters in saying hey i'm in the free world and i just heard this bbc story and john ramirez on your radio station and if he has hope how can i be suicidal today me you know if i'm not saying you're in prison you know how are you even over? it's just god it's just words of hope that guys are expressing and it's because people like you uh in this station they give them a platform they yeah. give them a place to be able to say it man and it's just affecting lives man amen amen you know so tell me about the Polunsky. You've been here how long? 22 years on this unit. What, yeah. what, what are some other good things? I mean, obviously the radio station is amazing, but it's only been in the last, what, three years? Yes. So what are some other things that uh, the Polunsky unit just does well? Yeah. Uh, you, you know, whether they've been here, do, doing it for a long time or whether they yeah. just started it. I know Prison Fellowship Academy is yeah. here, but what is what what sets Polunsky apart? Okay. And, uh, and, and just rehabilitating people. I, I try to tell everybody, hey, anything that is built and glorifies God, you got to grind for it. You got to grind. And uh, Polanski Unit was known as the Terror Dome when it was first started, or in the, in the early 90s, it was called the Terror Dome. There were more murders here. It was on the world news. People were getting murdered here, you know, several a day, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, God just came in. God came into this place. A young man that's here today is, used to be our Protestant pastor. He was just here. You met him with the beard, Sean Oliver. And uh, he was our Protestant pastor. And uh, just a few men deciding, you know, enough is enough. The gangs have what they're doing, and we're going to become the next gang as mm. Christians. And we started having rec yard services on the rec yard. Guys that were, you know, we had a bunch of FBI Christians that were undercover. They didn't come out. And uh, when they saw it, you know, we used to beat on podiums. There was no computers, cameras, projectors, anything. And it was just a very, we would be in multi-purpose rooms doing the beats on the podium. Uh, guys would try to sing. We would try to structure some things. Uh, uh, and just God started bringing free world people in here. People started coming in here. And uh, we had a retired Houston uh, fire chief. And he came in here and uh, uh, provided a big budget for buying everything. Mm. We started buying all the computers and projectors. And it just, and we, the right, uh, you know, when we wanted a laptop and TDC said no laptops ever. Well, the next day, a director came in here and she said, hey, uh, who is this guy? Uh, I wasn't Megamind then. I was just Rami. But she's like, who is this guy, Rami? And I was like, that's me. She said, you have a class called Kingdom Broad. I said, yeah. She said, you did a PowerPoint on a computer. I said, yeah. She said, how did you put the video in the PowerPoint? I was like, how did you see my PowerPoint in the free world? She goes, well, it's on a, it's on a server that's being shared. And I just saw it. I was Googling something. And I know it's all God. And she was like, no, my technician says it's impossible to put the video in the PowerPoint. I said, well, we did it. And she's like, how'd you get training for this? I'm like, 
like, I couldn't have. It's just God. So she said, she called on her cell phone. She said, I'm going to watch him do it right now. She said, put this video in this PowerPoint because I'm going to the Texas legislature. And uh, so I put it in there. She said, he just did it right in front of me. You can't tell me it doesn't work. So she, she, when she was leaving, she says, is there anything I can do for you? I was like, uh, you know, we really want to up the ante here. We want to get some laptops, some cameras. So she turned right there as a director. You know, I didn't realize how high she was. And she told the warden, hey, this is all on me. Let them get whatever they want to for this church wow. here. And that exploded into what we have today. Little pieces of that is what, that's what made it not so unusual to have all of this. But it's just grinding and working. Yeah. And we've gone through the wardens that said, tear it all down. I don't want none of that. We've been, Ooh. we've been to the places, you know, guys that have been in ministry in prison. No, when a new warden comes in, they can literally say, shut it all down. And we've been in an empty gym with white walls and nothing again, after having everything. And, uh, people just refuse to believe that that's God's final say so. Yeah. And, uh, it is built from the terror dome to this is got to be the largest faith based pod in history of mankind. This, this, do we have some drug problems here and there? Of course. Do we have, I haven't seen a fight here. Personally, Ooh, I haven't seen a serious? fight wow. in 15 years. I haven't seen a fight, you know, and is it because we have some spectacular believers here? No, we have believers that fall through the cracks all the time. Yeah, but it's just uh, it's well, just, I know there's been fights in faith based dorms at other. Oh, units, yeah. So. Oh, we call the, they call the PFA uh, dorm here, the professional fighters <laughs> alliance, you know, so, you know, they've gone through all that, but it's learned, but they learned, you know, hey, uh, maybe not to the level of a fight, but we need to see men's emotions raw yeah. because that's why we know God is working on it. Exactly. You know? Yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with raw emotions being expressed. Yeah. And then when people, especially lost people, mm -hmm. can see the conflict resolved, yeah, resolved. in a biblical yeah. manner. Yep. They don't know it's a biblical manner. But when, when two Christians resolve yeah. their conflict in a biblical manner, yeah. the world sees that. They're yeah. like, okay, I don't have to fight. That's yeah, perfect. I don't said. have to do yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and so there's nothing wrong. I yeah. tell our guys in our transitional house, I'm like, look, if y'all want to get mad at each other, that's one thing. Yeah. We went through a book called Emotional Intelligence 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> I was reading it. Our life coaches have it here. Yeah, yeah. and man, that I mean, I just read, I just found it uh, four or five years ago, and it changed my marriage. Yeah. It changed how I argue with my wow. wife. Yeah. You know, and uh, and then when you read the stats about the the uh, middle management and the mm -hmm. upper management, and and, mm -hmm. and how many of them have a high EQ, emotional yeah. quotient. Uh, and how much money yeah. is associated with the ones that have a higher emotional quotient. Yeah. Uh, it's like, man, you know, and it's not about the money. Yeah. Uh, but it's also about relational equity. I mean, yeah. if I learn to manage my emotions, mm -hmm. I'm going to have a better, I'm going to be a better husband, yeah. a better father. Yeah. And I'm going to have better relationships and a better witness. Yeah. Sometimes people just need to see that yeah. the people around it. They just, you know, it's, I can say this without a doubt. People are dying to see somebody do it right. You know, not perfect. But just do it right, you know, and when we walk it and we talk it and we express it and we give people the tools and the ways to uh, vocalize what they're going through. When you take a quest for authentic manhood class and you yes. can express to a guy, hey, you know what my problem is? Not that it makes me gay or feminine or anything. I have overly bonded with mother wound, you know, and when I can express that out now, I've got a tool to put words in. So when my celly is acting a, a strange kind of way, you know, and he's a little too emotional, I can say, hey, man, you were raised by your mother, weren't you? Yeah. So what? You know, and I can say that's the same wound I got, brother. And uh, that, it just gives us tools, man. And it helps us build community in here. And, and the biggest problem with us guys is we don't like to talk about it. No. So so when, we, when we're going through something on our own, we think, we automatically assume yeah. that we're the only one. Yeah. And we don't want to talk about it because we're afraid somebody might think yeah. that we're weak, that yeah. we're whatever. But if other people mm -hmm. will just take that step and talk about it yeah. or ask the right questions yeah. to get people to open up, then more men will see, man, I'm not alone. Yeah. I'm not the only one who's been through this, yeah. who thinks this, who goes through this. And now you're asked great leaders, ask great questions. Yeah. That comes from John Maxwell. I love mm -hmm. it. And, and, and Jesus, yeah. greatest leader of all time, yeah, yeah. asked the greatest questions of all time. Yeah. Even when he was asked questions, he turned around and answered the question with another question. Yeah. When you're, when you're able to ask those questions, mm -hmm. it gets them to look on the inside of themselves. Yeah. You become, when you ask the right questions, you become more like Jesus. Yeah. And it causes them to look inside themselves, yeah. but ultimately be pointed back to Jesus. Yeah, that's cool. And, uh, and that's what, man, just learning more and more about the radio station and what yeah. all is going on here just lets me know that you guys are asking the right questions, yeah. doing the right, doing the right thing, yeah. grinding it out. It's, it, you know, just hearing the story of, of how you've, mm -hmm. you know, gone through the wardens that say, shut yeah. it all down. You know, God's a God of the mountain and the valleys. Yeah. And some days, feels like the valley yeah 
And some days it feels like the mountain. But yeah. God's the God of both. Yeah. We need the valleys. Yeah. You know, because promotion comes from the valley. Mm-hmm. You can't get promoted on the top of the mountain. Yeah. You're already up there. But it starts. Promotion starts. Yeah, I think we valley. have to separate when I choose to go to the valley for disciplinary reasons. Absolutely. And when I, I'm going through the valley just to grow. When yep. God wants me to grow or to yep. share something. I think too many times we find ourselves in the valley because of a uh, inherent problem. And we try to attribute it to an attack. And it's just me. It's just me making yep. bad, poor choices. But when, so I can, good. when I can accept that, uh, I can find some real high, higher mountaintop experiences. Absolutely. Because I'm able to express that to people. And I firmly believe the scripture that uh, when we take care of God's business, man, he's about our business in some ways that will blow your mind. He will open some doors for you. I believe in the proverb that says your gift will make room for you. I don't believe you have to be very good at it even. I exactly. believe you just have to. Walk, grind your gift out and God will open some doors where you'll be able to sit. I can sit in front of you and say, you know what, Jay, uh, learning all this, knowing all, when I got locked up, they had Commodore, I had, I had a, a, a phone that was in a briefcase, you know, <laughs> and uh, there was nothing, you know, there what was, was the computer progress back then. DOS was yeah, DOS. It was I had, DOS, a, I had a Commodore 64, oh, you know, man. that was the computer I had. And supernaturally, God has opened these doors, and we're able to teach us to people. And people are able to see podcasts where they're wa- watching a walkthrough through a Windows environment wow. and that have never even seen a mouse. Yeah, and yeah. now they're seeing it. You know what's so cool about that? Not that they're uh, high-minded. Now they're like, it really isn't that complicated, is it? Yeah. And it removes anxiety and fear, and it's just sharing conversation. It's podcasts like yours where men are able to go on there and see that, hey, what I'm doing right now is going to equate to me being paid back in the future. It's not an epiphany when I'm at the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm going to step into the pants of what I'm going to become. It's so doing it right now in this place, man. It's going to translate into something great for you when you step. When you when you step out, uh, it'll just be icing on the cake. You'll be who you you can be who you want to be in here. Yeah, you know, without a doubt. Did you ever go through a time where you know? Because the law of parties, man. We've taken so many guys in our transitional house mm-hmm. affected by that. Yeah. Uh, we took a guy named Daniel uh, Daniel Lindsay. He got arrested at 15. Yep. He was in a group with a bunch of other 15, 16 year olds and an 18 year old committed mm-hmm. murder, uh, actually about a hundred yards away from yep. the group. And the group didn't know they heard the shot. They didn't know what happened. Eventually they know they all knew what happened. And same thing. The 18 mm-hmm. year old cooperated with, yep. with them, told them all the people that was there with him yep. and they all got 60 yep. and, uh, for murder and he got 20 and he was out in 10. Yeah. And they like those numbers for some reason. Yes, they do. Uh, and, and, you know, there's great people out there like uh, uh, Epicenter mm-hmm. who's trying to get that second chance or yeah. second look bill passed yeah. where they, they look at people like, like yeah. you. Uh, well, they're mainly dealing with the minors. Yeah. Um, you weren't a minor. You no. weren't a minor. No. But Daniel was a minor. He was 15. Mm-hmm. He spent two years in Houston, the radiator tank, yeah. getting certified as an adult. Yeah. And then and then when he did, he, he got the. He yeah. got the 60 years. So he ended up doing uh, 30 yeah. on that 60. And so 32 years altogether. Yeah. I mean, you, you basically took away, I mean, his half his teenage years, yeah. his young adult, all that. And I'm just like, the law of parties is just so unfair. It is. Um, he, he's, he, did, he, did a, he got a 60-year sentence. Mm-hmm. You got uh, your sentence yeah. for um, being around the wrong people yeah. at the wrong place at yeah. the wrong time. Yeah. And... I think, you know, sure, should we get punished for being around, around the wrong people? Yeah. The wrong, sure, but not 60 years, yeah. not life, not all this stuff. And I'm just like, I mean, there was a point where I was in prison mm-hmm. and I said, I was in SEG. I got in trouble, got locked up in SEG mm-hmm. for eight days. And I prayed a prayer and said, God, don't let me out of prison until you know I'm ready to go home. Yeah. That's a tough prayer to pray. Because everywhere, when I go speak in prisons, everywhere I go, whether it's Idaho, Texas, Missouri, mm-hmm. I, I always ask the crowd, hey, how many's ready to go home? And they all mm-hmm. raise their hand. And then I say, how many, how many think God thinks you're ready to go home? And they're mm-hmm. like, oh, I don't know if God thinks I'm ready to go mm-hmm. home. And, you know, and I got denied twice and my short way taken away. But eventually it was given back, mm-hmm. you know. And there was the, the first time I got denied parole, I was a little irritated at God. Because yeah. I was serving God. I was on, man, I was on fire, Rami. Yeah. And I was just like, God, what happened? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm doing good. Why don't you let me out? And he reminded me of the prayer I prayed. And, um, but I just wondered guys like you, the law of parties thing, man, in that, in that process, Mm -hmm. whether before saved, after you got saved, any of that, Mm -hmm. did you ever just like get irritated at the system? 
Oh, I'm and, perpetually and, irritated. And, 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 you know, irritated at God for not, you know, yeah. protecting you from the system. I, I mean, because obviously God's favor yeah. is all over you. Protection was all over you when he got yeah. in. But he could have also protected you from getting this long sentence, too. Yeah. So talk about that if you've ever been, you know, like, I mean. I've been, you know, I, I try to tell guys I have found myself and I still do uh, sometimes I question God, you know, I don't doubt. I question God and uh, uh, the attorney I had for my appeals, another young man on this unit had the same attorney. And this young man used to play handball on the handball court. And every time he would lose a point, he would flip off God on the handball court. And me and him, we both went into our appeals at the same time. And he got his case completely overturned. He was wow. 100% guilty. He got his case overturned because the judge literally said, hey, I met your father yesterday. I think he's a good guy. I think you had too much time, so I'm going to overturn your case. And he overturned his case. And I was like, God, I have done this, this, and this, and this. I got some questions. <laughs> I need you to to uh, give me some kind of understanding. And uh, uh, I don't, and you know what? I can't say that God has ever said, hey, you know, you deserve an explanation for that, Robert. Yeah. And uh, he has always just equipped me to find somebody and to realize, and I, I try not to water down, well, maybe I was just meant to be here today with Jay and God just wrote that in. I just think that uh, I heard the greatest testimony just a few days ago. We did an interview with a lady named Kay, and she she's a counselor for people that have been used in occult and witchcraft trials, I mean, rituals. Right. And uh, she's a specialist in that. And uh, she said, you know, six of my children were born and used in satanic rituals. And uh, I used to ask God all the time why this would happen. And uh, she said the same thing I've heard repetitively on different shows, on the shows and everything. She said, God looked at me this morning and said, Katie, I trust you to go through what you're going through. There's not many people I can trust to go through that pain and stay the person that I intend them to be. Season three. Season episode three. Episode two. two. Yes. We just watched it yes. last night as a family. Yeah. Oh, one of my, what of that's that. Little James. That. And in the first season, when he yeah. when he delivered Mary, yes, the two to me the two powerful, most powerful yeah. scenes in the. Chosen. She said this, and I was like, "Hey, you, you seen Chosen?" She's like, "No." I said, "That's the same terminology I'm hearing again and again." God is explaining to His people what you're going through. I trust you to go through that. There's not many people I can trust to go through that and remain firm and believe in me. And there is a lot of guys here that say, "Hey, you know what, Rami? I'm going to take a chance on being." transparent neutral and just accepting what god has because man how can you how can they come in here every day applaud the work that you're doing in here and leave you in here yeah you know and i'm like because god trust me that's my words now because so god trust me with that so good yeah. i'm gonna name that the title of your episode Amen. um so man you're gonna get out one day yeah uh you come up for parole when uh, about 12 years 12 years yeah. what are you gonna do when you get out well, I get deported because I'm from West Africa, so I have a, uh, what they call an INS detainer. So I get deported. But another God thing, of course, uh, my plans were to go. My father lives in Lebanon, but I'm going to move to Morocco. Okay. And uh, uh, my plan is to start a radio station, online radio station, and provide content for prisoners. And uh, just how small, I mean, how small we are in compared to God's thinking. I was sitting here with my co-host one day, and he said, what are you going to do when you get out? And I said, I'm going to go to Marrakesh and build that radio station. And he said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I'm going to invite wardens to come in and see uh, what it's like to talk to an offender off the record, you know, and spend a, a fellowship weekend with some ex-offenders away from everything and experience that. And he was like, well, good luck to you on that. And I was like, hey, get behind me, you little <laughs> devil. I said, I had a dream about it last night. And he was like, well, we'll see. Okay, now you're talking about the prisons over there. No, I'm talking about just starting a radio station about to to feed uh, content into this prison, into, just like we're doing right now. Into, yeah. into American prisons? Into American okay. prisons through Securus and other gotcha. tablets. And uh, the next day, the, the Wardens Coalition came in here, 19 wardens from all over the world. They were led in here by Mr. Doug Dreeke. He used yeah. to be the executive director. He, yeah, yeah, I was his SSI for his office whenever I was in prison. <laughs> How small the friggin' world is, you know. <laughs> I've actually talked to him out here yeah. right when we started the podcast. And he, I called him and I said, I used to be your SSI. Don't get scared. I'm just wanting you to come on, yeah. you know, come on our show. Yeah. 
and uh, that that was like a few months before Texas yeah. signed the contract with Securus because we were talking about tablets and all that. The world is minuscule. So, so yeah, yeah I, mean, I used to make that dude French vanilla coffee yeah. every morning. He walked in here and he on the screen we had America's walking tour, which is some of the things we put on the tablet now. It's just a person walking through America's streets with tours, and he said he had all these wardens here from Romania everywhere. He said, "Hey, Rami, what's that on the screen right there?" I said, "Oh, it's a it's a walking tour. We use it for therapeutic stuff." He's like, "Yeah, it's America's right there. That street's name." I was like, "Man, you're a man of the." world he said no we were just there last week i was like you were he said yeah we were there with a with a warden's a, a prison tour and i said doing what he said well that's how we meet you know people and we expand how i looked at my co-work and i was like yeah shut your face now <laughs> and he, he was like what are your plans and i said man i want to get a, a home there a riad in in downtown marrakesh and i want to have a retreat for wards he said when you start that let me know my we can be goodness. your first invitation oh wow and man god is just amazing man the dude that sits here and says god can't you're a fool your eyes are just literally you're just walking blind person literally and because when you when you challenge god not even in a you know a, a, a jacob challenge and say god, right it's just good you know I, I i think even even christians sometimes have a hard time believing that yeah. god can do certain things yeah. and i believe it's just because it's mainly because they're not walking in that one verse yeah. that he said i came to give you life the kingdom is all about yeah. the word and yeah the kingdom of god is not or Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm going through this right now. Do we deal with the resource center or the housing? Yeah. And I just realized God spoke to me. Holy Spirit spoke to me about a month ago at a conference. Mm-hmm. It was a business kingdom conference. And the guy on the stage was talking about kingdom. I'm like, I already know all this stuff, man. I want to mm-hmm. hear business stuff. He said, I'm supposed to say this. Uh, and, and I don't know who it's for, but he said, the kingdom of God is and. Yeah. You're talking about doing or something <laughs> yeah. or this or that. He said, the kingdom of God is and. So God said, you're going to do the resource center and. I, and the verse says, I came to give you life mm-hmm. and, and life more, life more yeah. abundantly. And the problem with some of us Christians, I was one of them at one time, is we don't walk in the end. Yeah. Um, if you confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you yeah. and yeah. cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yeah. So we walk, some of us walk into forgiveness, but we yeah. forget to walk in the yeah. cleansing us from yeah. all unrighteousness. Yeah. And so I think some Christians just, they, they haven't figured out yeah. the, the abundant life yeah. part. And that's the part where you start believing God for yeah. for bigger things. The verse says, "Above all, uh, you can think yeah. or imagine. Yeah. You you're mega mind, so you yeah. can think quite big. Yeah. But God wants to do even bigger oh, than yeah. you can think. Yeah. And so when people, when people, whether they're lost, whether they're they're saved, and you know what? A lot of times it's not the lost people. Yeah." They, they see that God mm-hmm. what God does and go, man, you yeah. know, and that's how some of them are, yeah. are led to the Lord. But somewhere the devil, the devil loves to work in ooh, complacency, mm-hmm. mediocrity. He loves to work in the good yeah. and k- to keep us from walking in the great. Yeah. I um, believe the believer that's walking in that uh, mediocre lifestyle, I don't think it makes you a, the least person. It doesn't make you broken shattered no uh, you're still going to heaven yeah you're still there but man just i can just encourage that person you're like you're at this precipice you're at one step a speed bump if you just take that one more step in your walk with jesus uh, i believe that man you'll see god do some things for the women that'll be hearing a podcast like this men that are out there the relationship i i, I always say i couldn't even imagine being a woman in prison mm. built on emotions built to want to nurture their children to have their husbands care for them to be cared for all that and to have to be in prison man my heart just breaks for them and uh, uh i just wish that they would realize that uh, uh whatever the situation is god will take that mess that you're in and uh, he will he will bless your socks off man and he does it just because he can't no other reason just because he can he loves yeah. us and uh i pray that people would see themselves the way god sees them which is perfect he doesn't see you any other way but perfect man you're a perfected person in the side when you can look at yourself you gotta learn to love yourself amen when you can love yourself and walk seeing yourself the way god sees you man you'll see some spectacular stuff taking place it's the basis of the verse love your neighbor as yourself yeah. you're it. only going to be able to love everybody yep. else to the degree you love yourself yep. and uh yeah you know Tell us what all programs you run on the radio station. Okay, I mean we're the uh, I'm the main DJ. I have a uh, Shane is my uh, G Money. He's the whitest guy in the penitentiary. His name is G Money. I don't know how that <laughs> happened, but uh, he is uh, uh, our content manager here, okay. and uh, basically I'm the production director. 
And uh, we have heavy metal shows. We have country shows. We have. Now are these like 30 minute long shows? Five hour, hour five, shows. Five hour shows. These are five okay. hour shows, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. They're at night because okay. of the heavy metal content and all that. So for the, for the young child listeners that we have on the facility, we give a warning and say this music, you know. But we have, we have Tejano. We have Bible studies. We do interviews in here every day. We broadcast live TV for them so guys don't have to jack their radios and try to get radio on your, on your, I mean, TV on your radio and get wow. your radio taken. So we stream news, TV okay. shows. Well, I saw I saw yeah. the TV channel yeah. over there, and I'm the like, the system okay. switches back and forth by itself. Even if we go on lockdown, it runs for four years on its own. You know, wow, it's all, it's all the scary AI doing everything, and uh, it plays the music. We have our we have call in show. I mean, call in uh, people send requests in and say, hey, can I request? We have request dedications. Uh, we have people from the outside that make dedications for yeah. men now, especially with the tablets. Now they're able to e message. And uh, it's just a cool way. The agency has really just been very good about doing their part to check it, make sure the content's right. Yeah. We, we pre-record everything, and they check it, and it goes out, and it just God does not let it return void. Okay, now so it just goes this this yeah. frequency goes just to yeah one hundred six point five is only here on this facility. Okay, uh, KCBI and a few uh, KSBJ and a Gateway have all came together. They're going to build ninety eight radio stations like this all around the all system. Around the They've already raised the money for yeah. that. And uh, they're building a, what they call Part 15 transmitters that have repeaters. It's not quite the size of this one with the antenna, but it'll cover your entire facility. You'll be able to talk. So this one's only on. It bleeds out into the parking lot a little bit, okay. but that's it. Now, the tablet podcast that we do here, they go out to the entire state of Texas, every inmate that has a, that has a tablet, and it goes out to 12 states. So 12 okay. states, federal prisons, and every inmate here in Texas so far. And that's done through Securus. Yes, yeah, so all through Securus. All through Securus. Yeah. Sorry. I, always, I always wonder, we get letters from states all over the nation but uh, i always wonder i wondered how many yeah how many states it actually goes yeah. to so as a matter of fact when i was telling guys that today I, we may have to cancel this show or that show because you were coming in guys were like oh yeah this guy's a background check you know so they they see your podcast on there you know okay so, so cool yeah. cool 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 um tell me tell me an impact story man like somebody that a story that you heard that was brought to your attention that was just life changing for somebody that listens to the radio. Uh, to me, the biggest one of, of a friend that we had here named uh, Rusty Ketchum, and uh, he came in here. He was a young man, had a lot of time. Uh, the stress of this entire system was on him, and he came in here and did a show one day, and uh, really just opened up like a volcano and talked about trying to commit suicide and how he had recently tried to commit suicide and how he was still suicidal and how he didn't know how to get out of it and darkness was on him and he knew every way to describe this complete darkness that was on him and uh, he gave in here and he, he came in here and he gave a little story about that and uh it was like floodgates opened up. We challenged everybody that day. Hey, if you if you're even contemplating this, I dare you to come down here and talk to me. You know, and uh, I had the next day I had guys coming here and knocking on the glass and hey, can I talk to you for a second? And I was like, yeah, hold on, I'm recording. They're like, I thought so. You're too busy for me. I was like, hey, hold on. So I shut it off, went out there, and I was like, what is it? He's like, hey, I'm the guy you were talking to yesterday. I was like, what are you talking about? He said the suicides, and uh, uh, man, I from those i had about five or six conversations just that day yeah. and they just wanted me to listen they didn't yeah. want mega minds great counseling any scripture they just wanted me to listen and uh, some of the mothers started uh e-messaging me and sending me messages and uh, jay pays at the time and saying hey my uh my son hasn't talked to me in 21 years he was uh, uh suicidal and he heard your radio show and he called me and wants to reconcile now he's not a believer he wow. hasn't changed but uh, uh and because of that a lady from canada actually saw the bbc story saw little rusty's little segment and uh she was very suicidal so that's why i know the name i was like i know that name yeah. he was the one on the uh, yeah. uh, bbc yeah and on the the tdcj uh, okay. web, uh their facebook page and uh, uh, a lady in Canada wrote and said, hey, I've been suicidal all my life. And I saw your story and it changed my life. Her, her husband even wrote him and said, please continue ministering to my wife. I've never seen her in this condition. And we've got letter after letter from the UK, from around the world, people that shouldn't even be able to see some of this content or seeing it. And it just it blows my mind what little God requires to do some amazing things yeah you know with suicide because I, I you know me personally mental health is a big challenge for me in here as far as seeing people hurt and broken you know and when i see it my heart goes out to them and uh to see god say hey you know what i'm going to bless you rami with the ability to bring them some healing it's just been a real it's been an amazing moment for me it really has 
Did you did you even realize? Did you even, could you even fathom the impact that this would have no. when you first got started? This was going to be a safe prisons infomercial station. That was it, just a loop of a info of safe prisons counseling, and it turned into Your gift only God has made room for it you. Sure has, amazing Jesus. That's what he is. And, and you know, one of the things that that God always has, He reminds me, and He always has me remind everyone wherever I go, yeah. is Romans eleven twenty nine. Mm-hmm. The gifts and callings of God yeah. are without repentance. repentance. They're yeah. with he, it's, they're irrevocable. Yeah. Another translation says, He ain't sorry He called us and no. gifted us, and He ain't changed His mind. Oh, he has no, no matter what we've yeah. done. Yeah. Your voice on this radio, my voice on this radio, whoever's listening to it, they should be one hundred percent confirmed. That uh, they have not been forgotten, Amen. because God's not going to you. You, even though we kind of look alike, you got the beard and the shaved head, and I got the same <laughs> thing. It doesn't take that, man. It just takes a little bit of saying, "Hey, you know what, God, use me." Yeah. And uh, right where you're at, I believe God can begin using you in some spectacular ways. Amen, amen. You know, Rami, I usually I usually pray after I uh, record the guest, mm-hmm. and then I pray in my final thoughts yeah. after each episode. But I would like to change that today, okay. and I would love, I'd be honored if you, yeah. you know, uh, first of all, before we do that, um, you know, you already know mm-hmm. this This goes out to inmates. Five, I think it's 500,000 tablets yeah. now in those 12 states. It may be more. I don't know. Um, speak to everybody locked up. Yeah. You're used to just speaking to the Polensky yeah. guys, but speak to everybody locked up in every yeah. situation, county jail, prisons, male, female, and just share, share a message of hope with them real quick. Yeah. I would just like to. Really, I don't know any other word. I don't have, uh, I have fancy words. I can really uh, just put together some really eloquent stuff. But uh, man, you just got to believe that God loves a person so much, man, that uh, uh, no matter how bad or unfair it seems, to have that thought when a guy comes up and says, man, it's awesome, I got my FI1. I know some people have the thought, man, where's mine? Why did you give it to him? Look what I'm doing. And I just want people to know, man, say your labor is not in vain. It really is not. What you're doing, God has seen it. He planted it in your heart. He created that situation before you even a nugget in your mother's womb. God created that moment. And uh, uh, he is just spectacular in the way that he can do things. He can take shattered lives. He can take lives that are not even that bad off. And he can just do some amazing things with it. You just got to believe that you have not been forgotten, man. Amen. I don't, I don't care how far you're in, how, what level security level you are in death row, life row, uh, freedom row, whatever you call it, man, it is not you, man. It is not that place does not define you. You can change your world from where you are. One person, no matter where you're at, you can write a letter. You can have a conversation. You can make a phone call. You can get on a radio broadcast. You can pray. You can just lift me up in prayer and you can do more spectacular things than Warden Dickerson, Mr. Dreeke, or Mr. Collier could ever do for me. Your prayer can move mountains in heaven, man. So no one, no one is left behind ever. Mm, amen. That's amen. for real. I believe that 100%. Rami, thank you so much for mm-hmm. allowing me to uh, bring you on the show. Thank you. And uh, I appreciate what you do for the kingdom. Yeah. You make such a big impact for the Thank kingdom you. and i and i uh, applaud you yeah. i stand with you Amen. uh in the in the in the field and grinding to, grinding together yeah. um i'd be honored if you would if you would pray yeah. over our listeners yeah uh i'm still probably going to pray a prayer over you i always okay. pray for our guests but okay. uh but just just end end the podcast episode yeah. in prayer and uh and lift everyone up if All you right. don't mind thank you father i thank you for who you are i thank you that uh uh Father, we, we just see ourselves so small sometimes. We see ourselves so uh, powerless, so unable. But I pray that, that that man or woman, Father, that when they look in the mirror right now, Father, they can see themselves the way you see them, Father. Perfect, yeah. put together yes. in a way they could never imagine that that dream that's in their heart, uh, you put it there, Father. You gave them the desires of their heart, Father. You placed it there, and it seems impossible. It may seem so far away, or it may be right at their doorstep right now. Uh, whatever the situation is, Father, I pray that you just infect people with hope. You let them know that their conversation means the world. You mm-hmm. let them know how small this universe is in comparison to you, Father. I know this system, uh, that door, that cell, that toilet, that situation, that Johnny, whatever they're going through, Father, uh, as bleak as it might look or as bright as it might look in their life right now, Father, you're still in control. Yes. You're still the architect of it all. You're still the God that calls the impossible things into this world. And you are storming and invading our space. So, Father, I lift up that person that uh, 
feels that they don't have another step, Father, that needs your strength, that needs your hope, that needs to hear something. And I pray that it was this podcast. I pray that it was uh, uh, our voices or the voices of someone you've placed in their life, confirming to them that they are loved, thought about, and uh, every single piece of equipment in this room, everything, everything that's on background check, every microphone, every cable was put together and placed in that place mm. just for you, the yeah. person listening to this right now. And believe that, believe that. I pray that you infect them with that trust in you, Father, and help them to take that next step in you. Amen. 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 Rami, uh, who's your favorite uh, sports team? Uh, USC. USC. (laughs) Oh, okay. Not even any pros. Just go straight to college. USC. All right. Basketball and football? Uh, Football. Football? Yeah. Okay. All right. Diehard USC Who's your favorite USC quarterback of all time? Uh, I will not speak. I will not speak that right now because <laughs> see this is God does this man you know I mean, no wait a minute I'm a Pittsburgh Steeler fan yeah. so I'm, uh, not, now, now, I will, I'm not a Cowboy fan I will, so you can say I am a big Ben fan I usually don't pick the NFL but if you were asking me I am a diehard big Ben fan I really am I just like a lot of I like Aaron Rodgers I like the Pittsburgh Steelers grind so I will retract I like the USC I like Reggie Bush you know yeah. I'm I'm a fan of all of them but uh. uh I do, yeah. I will. I will retract that and say I do like Pittsburgh. All right. Regardless of the record, they are grinders. <laughs> they are grinders. Awesome, man! Yeah. It's been a privilege and an honor to to share the stage with you. Yeah. And I know this is going to go on on your your platform as well. Yes, so thank you for. I appreciate for doing you, that. man. I appreciate and, uh, you. Everybody's voice matters. Some someone somewhere right now is like, man, I knew him. You know, or I know him, <laughs> or hey, I knew that person that they're talking about. And it's just it's just to show you how small this world is. All right. Well, thanks again, man, and thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate you. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Background Check Podcast, brought to you by Forgiven Felons, helping people with a past realize their future. For more information, please visit ForgivenFelons.org. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and please don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss the latest episode. I'm J.D. Gum, and this has been Background Check.